Good evening, everyone, and welcome to College Facebook Live. This is a series dedicated to bringing parents and families better information about higher education and better access to college admissions. I'm Kelsey Tarosian, and I am the admissions manager at College. We are absolutely thrilled to welcome you tonight as we discuss the college interview with admissions better, veteran, excuse me, Jennifer Sandoval Donks, who is the vice president for admission and financial aid at Claremont McKenna College. For any of you joining us tonight who don't know us yet, College is a private college admissions advisory group. We are a team of experienced admissions professionals that works really closely with students and their families, really anywhere on their path to higher education. Our work, of course, is aimed at helping students to identify and apply to best foot colleges, but we also find that along the way, we tend to uncover some of their interests and ignite that deeper potential um, while they're still in high school. So it's very exciting work. Um, a couple of little housekeeping notes before we have our panelists join us here. First of all, as I mentioned, our goal is to reach just as many members of the community with the information that they need, with the information that you need, as we possibly can. So I want to encourage you to please hit like if you're finding this useful so we know how we're doing. And please feel free to pop questions into the comments box as we go. We will, we always save time for questions at the end. And in fact, that sometimes when some of the best um, the best topics pop up. So I really want to encourage all of you to ask anything that comes up for you as we go. We will answer all of your questions. Um, and I want to, you know, just say, you know, if you have a question about something, I can guarantee you that somebody else does too. All right. So without further ado, I'm very excited to invite our panelists to join the stream. First, I'd like to introduce Jenny Umhofer, who is our owner and founder and our host tonight. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Kelsey. Thanks. Yeah. Next, I'd like to introduce Jennifer Sandoval Donks, who is, oops, there we go, uh, <laughs> who is the Vice President for Admission and Financial Aid at Claremont McKenna College. Welcome, Jennifer. We're so happy to have you here tonight. Thank you. Thrilled to be here. Yay. Um, so for anybody who doesn't already know Jennifer and isn't familiar with her wonderful work, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about who she is. She's actually a native Southern Californian, um, just like actually all three of us tonight. Um, she earned her bachelor's and master's degrees at University of Southern California right here. And she traveled, interestingly, for her sorority immediately following college graduation. And that's where she kind of discovered this whole admissions professions. After visiting about 40 colleges and universities, um, she, she learned about it and she got her first job commencing at the USC Annenberg School of Communication and Journalism before she joined the admissions office at CMC. Um, if you're wondering what a VP for admission and financial aid actually does, in a nutshell, Jennifer oversees recruitment, admission, and financial aid for Claremont McKenna College. And she's shared with us that she really just loves working with students, working with families during the college search process, and being such a part of you know this, this community, this amazing community of students and faculty and administrators at CMC. It sounds like you've been incredibly lucky in your career path, Jennifer. We're really lucky to have you here tonight. Thank you, yes. And without any further ado, I'm going to hand it over to these ladies and let the information start rolling. So have a great conversation, guys. Thank you, Kelsey. Kelsey. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer, for being here. We're gonna talk a little bit tonight about the college interview, um, but just to sort of get started here, I, I just wanna say, you know, it's it's been quite a year so far, and um, uh, it's wonderful to have you, Jen. You know, I remember when we were sort of working side by side in the Claremont Colleges, when I was at Scripps College, and you were at CMC, and kind of rising up in the ranks. Um, so much has changed since then. Um, and so I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Yes, happy to do it. Yeah, so I'm hearing a lot about the concerns families have right now, and they seem to be swirling around, the questions seem to be swirling around the test, um, how colleges are going to handle online learning, and even writing the COVID-19 essay. I'm wondering if, you know, before we get too far into the college interview topic, do you have any advice for um, families on how they can tackle some of these questions and stay focused on the admissions process before getting too far, you know, far ahead? Right. I would say, you know, the word focused is key. 
So focused on what's best for the student, uh, what's best for your child if you're the parent, and really the, those same things continue to, be, continue to hold true even through this pandemic. Keep in mind, this is a global pandemic, right? So we're all aware of the challenges and we know there are different levels of challenge that, that folks have faced, whether that be personal or within their community. And for some globally, they've been dealing with the distance learning for even longer. The runway has been longer than, than for some of us here in the States. So we're, we're well aware of the challenges that your high schools are communicating with us as best they can about what shifts they had to make in the spring shifts they've continued to make, and this includes academic, co-curricular, extracurricular opportunities. So they're they're paving that path for you, so you do not need to worry about all the things, having to explain all those things. We know it was an extraordinary and epic spring. It, it continues, to, we continue to, to move through this. We're now, you know, gonna be moving closer to the holidays, and here we still are. So the pandemic has impacted each of us differently, and so, how much that plays into your process is for you to determine. But in terms of the process, remember, this is just about uh, focusing on where what's best for you, your educational journey, your accomplishments up to this point, and how you've navigated this process. And, you know, th there's we've all learned something, I think, about ourselves and our communities and maybe the, the greater world and really being able to use that and as you articulate who you are and who you want to be in that essay. Very well said. Thank you, Jen. Um, so let's get started on the interview. Um, I understand the interview is very important to the Claremont McKenna uh, decision making process. And um, although it's not the single most important, you know, um, it is it is a factor that you do consider. Um, and I know that there are colleges that don't do interviews at all. And I'm wondering why the interview plays a significant role in the admissions process at Claremont McKenna. Right, a lot of it has to do with the intimate size of our community. So I describe it when I used to work at USC, there are so many communities you are a part of. There's the big university, but students are really attaching themselves and, and becoming part of communities within the big university. At Claremont McKenna, there's a core community. And with 330 students in a entering class, we believe every single student stands to make a big impact in our community. And we stand to make a big impact on them and their development as leaders. So we work very hard in crafting that class and, and working on that. And the opportunity to get to know students at a more personal level is really, really key. We get to read your essay, we get to read your accomplishments, we read your recommendations, but there is nothing like seeing you light up when you're talking about a particular memory, about a, something you're really passionate about, when you're talking about a challenging class you had, your you know, your personality, and all of that is just a big part, and we, we value that. So while it's not humanly possible right now for us to interview every single one of our applicants, we really like to interview as many as possible and we also have an optional video that students can upload as well if they're not if they feel they're not able to to have an interview during this process. That's oh that's that's really helpful. So if a student isn't able to interview, they can submit a video, a 2-minute video, and is that found on the common application or where would they do that? That's a great question. No, the prompts are on CMC's website, so if students want to get a head start or you can actually do the video in advance, you won't actually upload the video until you've submitted your application to CMC. I you'll see. Get, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. you'll, get a, you'll get directions after you submit it how to do it. Oh, okay, got it. That's very helpful. Um, so yeah, just to rewind just for a second, um, I just want to mention there's something called holistic review that we've been talking about in these live sessions, and I thought maybe it would be t um, prudent to just take a second to define what that is. Um, from from my experience, it is something that is going to be uh, sort of discussed a lot right now in, in light of the schools going test optional. Um, but for those of you who are unfamiliar with what holistic, the term holistic means, um, it is really the process by which admissions officers aim to look at the whole student um, as represented by every part of the application packet, um, especially painting a, a, a picture of who the student might be and recognizing the students um, more that, that are, it's actually more than just the GPA and the SAT scores. And as a reader, it means looking at each part of the application packet contextual, contextually rather than at, at, at like a different disparate parts. 
Would that be correct? Did I hit that? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so could you talk a little bit about CMC's uh, holistic review process and when you're reading for such a selective college like CMC? Yes. So, you know, there's kind of two parts of, a, of an application. There's the academic credentials and accomplishments and personal credentials and accomplishments. So, and those two have a nexus, certainly, and they're, and they're connected. So, you know, we're looking to see when we're looking at an academic record, we're looking at the rigor of their curriculum in core subject areas as appropriate. We know, you know, for some students, three APs is absolutely where they want to be, and that's fine. They shouldn't feel like they need to add additional ones. We're really looking to see that they're curious that they do seek out that challenge and there's lots of ways that they can show that. We'll look at their grades, if there's any disruption, just an explanation. Obviously with the pandemic, it'll be a bit different. We'll, we'll understand the spring 2020 had its own, um, like I said, epic disruption disruptions to it. But yes, so we're looking at that. We wanna know that the student can be academically successful, but also that they're gonna really contribute to our dynamic intellectual small class sizes and you know, inquiry based learning process and enjoy that. The second part, personal. So this is really much more, you know, when I tell students usually academically that they that process keeps you in the process, you know, and, it, and most of our applicants are achieving at high levels. It's really alignment with our mission and CMC's mission is really explicit. It's to prepare young people to be thoughtful and productive and to prepare them for responsible leadership in business, government, and the professions. And there are other things that, that certainly are part of that mission, but we are looking for students who at a very young age are able to articulate that they wanna be a leader. They see themselves going into, you know, um, in, into one of these sectors of society and it's okay that they don't have all that leadership fully developed and, and planned out. Your best years are ahead of you. We certainly believe that. But that they have been thoughtful about looking at this. This is not just a school I'm applying to because it's in Southern California in a liberal arts college. This is a place that I actually think I can benefit. We call it benefiting from and contributing to our singular mission. So we're looking a lot at that. And there's a question in the application that asks, it's very simple. Why are you applying to Claire McKenna? And we hope that again, we don't need a, we don't want you to feel like you have to come up with a thesis for that. But just when you take a step back and think about of all the schools that I can apply to, of all the places I can see myself, why is this one in this group? And what about it that speaks to you? All your responses are gonna be different. There is no one specific thing we're expecting students to say, but we do expect it to resonate with something that is unique about us. And again, not the standard response of liberal arts college in Southern California. Fascinating. So it's it's really a very specific cohort of students that are probably going to apply, given the mission, given the institutional priorities, um, and what you just outlined. That that's absolutely fascinating. Um, and of course, um, everyone wants to know, you know, you know, to just bring it back to the interview and um, to talk a little bit more about that topic. Um, everyone wants to know sort of how to nail the interview, how to nail the college interview. Um, but we know that there's no necessarily no formula for it. Um, it might be helpful to hear about some examples of the college interview that stood out for you, you know, and, and why they stood out. Right. So keep in mind, while I understand interview is, a, is an intimidating word, you know, it, it, it has this implication that this is and it is it's, it's a part of the process. But it, I want the, to um, take away the notion that it's it has to be formal. We do expect a student to be focused during the interview and, and do their best to, you know, in that focus. But we also want them very real. And so the best thing, the best way I can describe it is this is an opportunity for you to share more about yourself and to learn more about the college too in a in a one-on-one -on -one way. And so when you think about going into it and you know what are all the things that I need to keep in mind, you're interested in the school. You're interested enough that you're taking time out of your day and all your other priorities to chat with us. So what is it about CMC that you want to share with us? You know, taking some time to jot that down, just some, some bullet points there. What are questions you have for the school? When you think about who you want to be, why you're going to college, how do you think this, you know, CMC will help you along in that journey? And how will you help us along in our journey to meet our mission? So really kind of thinking just through those questions. And I always tell students, don't worry about, they're going to ask me a question that I don't know the answer to. We may, and that's okay. Um, we, you know, and I, 
I joke with people, I get asked questions I don't know the answer to on a regular basis. Really, if we're asking a question and it's not one that you thought about, it's okay to take a different, you know, I, I'd never really thought of that perspective or give me a minute, let me, and you know, and you can also come back to it if as you're going through the interview, you remember something else that you want to add or email the interviewer later and say, you know what, after I remove myself from the interview, I completely forgot to share this or I just wanted to add this. So you always have the opportunity to do that. And remember, it's a part, as Jenny so perfectly rounded up, it's a part of your story. It's a part, of, it's, a, it's an opportunity and a, a vehicle to tell your story in a personal way. We all rather watch video than sometimes read about something, right? Uh, reading about it is great, and that's a great way for us to dig in. But seeing the story and, and hearing the people tell the story is so can be so much more compelling, and that really is the value of the interview. Wonderful. I, re I really appreciate what you said, that it's not necessarily super formal, that it's, it's not about perfection, and that really it's a chance to express who you are and talk a little bit about why CMC in this case um, and to highlight some of the reasons why you're drawn to this particular college. Um, so that makes a lot of sense. Um, and, you know, I, I hope that students that are listening that are considering applying that they really do, you know, take that step and, and sign up for an interview. Is there, a, so are, is that something that they can just do online or? Um, as long as they're a high school senior, we have interviews, they go to our website, they're, they're all virtual, which right. is great because that means we actually can offer more interviews at more times and days of the week. So in many ways, it'll be easier for students to be able to sign up for one. So get your calendar ready, go on, sign up. We have them all throughout. We interview through the first week of December for, and for high school juniors, if there are any out there, we'll start interviewing again in May. Excellent. Okay. So I think Kelsey's going to put the uh, the link into the feed. So if anyone is listening and wants to check it out, please feel free to do that. Um, so I want to kind of uh, shift focus and, and, and ask you a little bit about how COVID-19, that's something that's on everyone's mind, how COVID has changed uh, the interview, if, if it has, um, or the admissions process. You mentioned everything is online, of course. Um, but, you know, if you can give us any insights into how you're thinking differently about the interview and or the admissions process um, in light of COVID-19 and uh, and how it's changing. Yeah, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Well, I mean, the, the biggest difference is it's virtual. I mean, we, we only would do interviews in this kind of format uh, on rare occasion, you know, in, in special circumstances. So, the fact that we're able to reach so many people across so many different time zones and, and keep in mind the interviewer at CMC is either an admission officer like myself, a senior interviewer, or we also have alumni interviewers. And when you go to our website, you'll see information about them as well. So you can pick the person, you know, you'd like to interview, but you know, it, it has allowed us to, I feel like reach each other in our own spaces, which is something normally we would do in a coffee shop, at a park, maybe at the CMC admission office, <laughs> and great experiences. But here, you get to be in your space, in wherever it is you feel most comfortable, we, same for us. And I think it takes some of that pressure off of just that, that initial meeting. And it allows just that opportunity, again, for that, that space. And it allows us to talk about things that we're going through probably in a more personal way. And I think for everybody, this is impacting, as I mentioned before, us differently. For some students, they don't mention the pandemic at all. We're doing the interview with them. I think that for them, this is a reprieve. They do not want to talk about the pandemic. They want to talk about college. They want to talk about what they're thinking about. And the, just, you know, this is, this is space where the pandemic does not need to infiltrate. For others, it's absolutely changed so many things in their life, sometimes dramatically in, you know, losses that they've had, loss of parents' jobs, um, significant losses like family members, or it's just a, a changing how they see the world. So for them, it's impossible to talk about what they're going to want out of college without the pandemic. And then there are students everywhere in between. You decide where you want to be. We're not expecting you to talk about the impacts of the pandemic. Um, so you come into it and say, this is, you know, I'm approaching the interview. This is why I want to do it. This is why I want to go to the school. And that's how you get to focus and, and choose that. How has COVID impacted, I think, that the admission process? You know, 
a year ago when we had to close everything down, we were right midstream. We had just wrapped up admission committee and we're moving into releasing decisions and that admission cycle. As high school seniors out there, you all know because you were getting ready to do your college visits and that all got pretty disrupted quickly. What we learned of this process, you know, we used to really just do things pretty, you know, one, two big programs for admitted students, you know, some appointments with them, but really not a lot of contact. We pretty much were putting them in the community and, and letting them figure out. And we were so privileged to engage with so many members. I mean, I, I do feel like I spoke with every single student in this incoming class, um, either as a group or individually, and some of them on several occasions, just about a variety of different things. And I felt like that ability, their ability to be able to connect with us and ask questions I don't think that would have ever come up, have a lot more candid conversations, really drastically improved. We're seeing that with recruitment too. So we've been doing online info sessions since March, and we've been doing student virtual student panels, there's a virtual tour coming online. And I feel like there's the conversations I've had with families have been so much more substantive because if, if they attend an online session or they hear me speak at you know an, a panel that might be going on, they reach out to me and I say, let's do a Zoom call. And there we are sitting there while you know, they're having coffee and tea and we're talking about what their concerns are about the financial aid part. And I don't know if that would have ever happened before. Honestly, I think just there as much we're not in some ways as busy running around and doing the things that we might have been doing in, in life, traveling, you know, all, we're doing meetings still and we're still you're still doing school. I definitely get that. But there is time to stop and say, we have the time. Let's get those questions answered. Let's figure this out. And, you know, yeah, we've been able to offer so much more content and engage with you. So I do think there's a lot of opportunity in this for you. It Yes not having the physical space to go visit a campus and interact with the people is 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 a big challenge but you're you're, you're getting to interact with with community members i think across most colleges and universities in ways you would never have been able to because we have the time and the one thing we know we need to do is be there for you and be able to answer your questions so i do think the applicants have gotten to know us better from the ones that i've talked to than they probably have in the past and so I think that will show in their college selection and in their essays and ability to reflect on why they're applying to certain schools. Wow. That's, it sounds like you, uh, as an admissions office, really were able to pause and, and sort of think and, and sort of pivot in a way to that incoming community in a different way. And maybe perhaps you're learning a lot um, you know, along the way. I want to kind of come back to the interview and um, ask you if, you know, if you have any advice on um, anything that students should avoid talking about in the college interview. Yes. You know, it, it, of all the interviews I've done, I think there have only been two or three that were memorable for perhaps a negative reason. And really it, it had more to do with it. the example I'll give is a student got up and walked out and just left without <laughs> the interview was a very odd. Maybe they were nervous. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was odd, and, and who knows what 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 was that was about? But that's not going to happen in a virtual setting. So I, I really look at it as I think when you think about take this, you know, think about this as you you do you don't want to roll out of bed. The same things your teachers are telling you. Yeah. You want to show up. You want to make sure that you know you've you've done the prep for it. Um, and I think that. The key thing is talk about things that you're comfortable talking about. If you are a humorous person and you giggle a lot, that's going to come out in the interview and that's okay. And that's where you want to keep it maybe a little bit lighter. When you're thinking about talking about ish things, sometimes applicants have had things that have been pretty tragic in their life or tragic that have happened to those that, that are very close to them. And what I tell students is you are no, under no obligation to share that with us. You, you can say, look, um, my junior year, that there was a bump and there was something that you know happened that really had a big impact on me. And so we just kind of want to share that. That's all you need to say. You do not need to go down that that path. If you choose to, just keep in mind it's it's okay to, but that the amount of emotion, especially if you're talking about something that can be dredged up from that. And it it that's really not the best space and use of the interview. So just you know, take a deep breath and think about. You, you do not need to share anything. You just say there was there was this, you know, challenging aspect of my life and it did impact a bit of that. This is how I responded to it, you know, and, and kind of move on if, if you choose to share that kind of stuff in an interview. But that's really more that would be my my big takeaway is 
awareness of how talking about certain things, your own, your own reaction, your, you know, this is uh, not really a counseling session, right? So this is really much more you sharing about yourself. It is about putting your best foot forward. So if there are topics to avoid, I would say it's ones that, you know, tend to evoke really strong emotional responses in you. Those might be good things to not center on in your interview. That's great advice. Really great advice, Jen. Uh, you know, um, I'm thinking about the work that we do with our students at college and kind of walking through with a mock interview can sometimes really help, to, you know, the student to calm down and, and focus on what their talking points are and what, how they want to um, convey those sort of themes or things that are important to them about um, the college, like CMC. Um, and so just you know, thinking about doing a mock interview, doing, you know, a rehearsal of, of sorts, you know, to, to really walk in with that confidence or, or in this case, you know, log on to Zoom with that confidence um, to really share yourself in a way that is, um, you know, sharing your strengths and sharing the things that you really want to um, shine the light on. Um, Preparation so is key, yes. You know, exactly. Just not necessarily rehearsal, but just that, you know, we all know that before we go on, if you're doing a play, sport, whatever it is that we all know the rituals we go through so that we feel prepared and ready. And maybe even some notes or having something written down or anything that you want to share that's important to you. Um, would you mind if a student had a couple thoughts that they had written down and looked, referred to? Not at all. As a matter of fact, we might be writing because that we might be interviewing a lot of students that day. And so you need to make sure we're keeping notes. So don't worry and, and get distracted by that. That's just us trying to keep everything straight and, and you know, um, take notes. Same thing for you. If you want to refer to something that that's great. That's, you know, it's it's an open book test. And in, in that, in that <laughs> the test is about you, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so if you need to refer back to exactly what that program was named, that's fine. <laughs> great. That's great advice. Um, you know, this is such a strange time for colleges. Um, tell me, I, I'm wondering about how you think Claremont McKenna College is going to emerge from all of this, you know, the, this this year long process, perhaps a little bit longer. I don't know. Uh, we don't know. Yes. Well, you know, it, it, it is definitely akin to what I how I described us in our our first year class. It I think it has brought all of us a lot closer. Uh, I mean, the amount of people who offer to help and support the community, the outpouring, no matter what department it is, whoever's asking for help has been extraordinary. And that goes from trustees, alumni, faculty, students, staff, they everybody's just been extremely supportive. I think they're, you know, the, the challenge of bringing something that is such an in-person experience virtual is challenging. I think it's made us appreciate everything that we had every single day um, when we were there, but that we're going to get back there. And really the goal right now is that is to keep each other supported, keep each other feeling like we're learning, we're engaging. And if there's any opportunity for us to make an impact, a positive impact to solve a problem, whether that be local in our families, to really be, be in that process and, and doing what we can. So at least we feel like we're you know, make that change. So I think for CMC, the community will strengthen. This this incoming class is incredibly close and bonded, and they're going to have experienced not only an end of high school, but a, a, in a trajectory and start to college that will unlikely ever be anybody else will ever have to experience. I joke with them that they're going to be telling their grandkids this, and I said, oh, you, you laugh, but you will. Well, and it's true. It. Nobody will believe it. Um, your yearbooks will have the masks, you know, and, you know, all these all these kinds of things that you will be a distant memory because it will at some point. But I, I do believe that it's it's called us to solve problems in unique ways, to reach out to each other, to support each other, to find our, our local communities when we can do that. And I think that'll only be strengthened when we get back. And I also think that we've learned some of the virtues of the virtual like learning. So, you know, there's there's opportunities, I think, if uh, when we think about it for some students, like, you know, if they can't come to campus for whatever reason, they'd always have to take a leave. Well, if we can maybe have vir some virtual classes, they could potentially still take classes, you know, in that semester that they may not be able to be there. So I think there's there's so many different ways to see this as an opportunity. Um, replete with her challenges <laughs> that this pandemic has presented, but 
yeah, I definitely see us coming through this stronger on the other side, so much more appreciative and really understanding what the most important aspects of our experience are. We will have preserved them through the virtual the virtual environment. And when we are in person, they will only get strengthened. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I'm just uh, mindful of our time. Um, I, I want to kind of wrap up with a question for you um, to just hear. So what are your what are some of your words of wisdom for students um, that, you know, maybe feel that they don't know what to do or they're, you know, they're at a loss for the, during this time. What, what advice would you give all the rising seniors out there regarding their essays and their applications? Well, I admire you all because this is the college search process, application process is challenging without a pandemic. And you've read about it, you've heard about it, you've seen siblings and friends go through it, and you're walking through it truly in um, even more extraordinary pressure points with what appears to be a lot of lack of information. I think, you know, how our score is going to be used. How is this going to be used? Keep just, uh, you know, take a, take a deep breath as many times as you can. Remember, this is about you. That never changed. This is about you. This is about your college search process. Who you are, who you want to become may have been altered with the pandemic, but that's okay. You, you know, your reflection point where you're at and other people may have lots of opinions about your process, but this is yours to own and um, appreciate that aspect of it. And know that we, you know, this is wherever, wherever you apply, wherever you call home, you know, in, in um, a year from now, you're gonna make it work. You're gonna adapt. You're gonna have come through something at a very young and pivotal time in your life. And it's gonna shape who you are and what you do for our society. So it may seem like extraordinary challenges. Know that it's not as opaque as it seems. This is a reality. We don't have access to the things we had before. <laughs> and um, we're all doing the best we can. We're all gonna continue to adjust and adapt. But you actually have a pretty extraordinary, when you think about it, um, turning point in your life at a time that is gonna be pivotal in, in the role you serve in society, I think, as, as you lean forward. So deep breaths, lots of deep breaths, laugh. Any opportunity you get to un unwind all this, don't always be thinking about the pandemic, don't always thinking about be thinking about college. Remember what brings you so much joy, don't forget it, and um, stick to those things, stay in touch with those people, even if it's virtual, and don't feel bad about it. You know, if you need those four hours to watch Netflix, go for it. Um, <laughs> it's not gonna be there. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> it's all going to be there, you know, <laughs> rest and you need to, you know, yeah. cook with your family or whatever it is. Don't feel bad about doing that stuff. Um, that's again, very helpful. Yeah. That's, that's so helpful. I, I really appreciate you saying that, taking the time to say that to our seniors that are listening and, and parents, that this is an extraordinary situation and that we're going to get through it. Um, so thank you so much. Yes. I'm going to um, go ahead and invite Kelsey back into the studio and see if there are any questions out there that you might have um, that you would like to ask. Um, yeah. Hi, guys. So thank you, first of all, for such an amazing conversation. I, you know, I, I spend most of my time immersed in the world of colleges and applications, the professional in the field, but I, I feel like I learned something so so wonderful tonight. So I just I thank you so much. And one of the things I took away was, you know, there is so much fear, as Jenny said at the beginning, and as you just said, you know, the families, parents, they're they're swirling in fear. They're wondering, they're feeling like they're out of control. They don't know what's going to happen with test optional. They don't know what's going to happen with virtual. They don't know how to make themselves shine. And one of the things that I heard from you over and over tonight was that. You know, the students actually have a lot of control in this process because, as you said, it is all about you. Um, and I'm wondering if, you know, if you feel like that's true. And also, you know, with parents and students so scared to mess it up, do you think that there's like one single thing that you could do? Like you make a phone call and you accidentally say the wrong thing. Is there one thing, like a, short of maybe something super extreme, that, that a family could do that would just totally shoot their chances at CMC? No. I mean, I, th I think you really, you know, this is, there's no question that there may be a new question we're looking at, what, whatever you're, I, I, we, I'm actually doing a session for parents two Saturdays from now. I, I know parents probably haven't been as much part of the, on, these online <laughs> info sessions. So I want to make sure they're getting their questions answered as well. But no, you know, I, I, 
this we're none of us are perfect. We are all going through this. And so I don't think anybody should add a tack on to all the other things that you may be fearful about that you might be doing the wrong thing or not doing enough of a particular thing. You're each on a different journey and, you know, as best as you can, maybe one of the pauses of virtual is hopefully there's not as much comparing notes. Oh, where's okay. so applying? Where are you? I, I raised my niece and when she was applying, I said, you don't tell anybody where you're applying. That is none of their business. You, you tell who you want to tell. You do not need them up your, you know, on your case to find out where you got in. This is your process. And I think for parents, that's hard too. Where are they applying? Where they, this not about them. In four years, it's you're going to be there watching them walk across that stage of graduation. You won't remember any of this. Um, so this is just, yeah, keep it in perspective. Keep it in perspective. There's going to be lots of options. You're going to apply, might get into all your schools, might get into a few. Um, you're going to pick a school. At the end of the day, all the schools are, that you got into are going to want you. And so you're going to be back in the decision spot and in, in the position of power to pick the place that's best for you. So, yeah, it's just, um, you know, I think when it comes, there's so much anxiety about it, but we all went to different schools. We all had experiences of growth and learning and they prepared us for for life whatever institution so just keep that in mind it's all great schools out there and um it yeah you're, you're gonna be fine yeah yeah thank you so much for that i think that people really need to hear that over and over honestly um because we all need that reassurance and the other thing i kept hearing is you know it's it's so clear jennifer how much you care how much you care about the students at CMC, how much you care about the community, but also how much you care about just students who are out there and applying and going through this. And um, and I think um, I think that one of the messages here tonight is that that admissions offices and colleges are full of real people that really actually care. And students that fear we were talking about it has to do with. The, the opacity and feeling like there's this big mystery and there's this, you know, unfeeling, you know, entity that is going to be judging you. Um, and I think we need to just remember that these are real people who actually care and they really want real 17 year olds to come or at the time, maybe 18 year olds to come to their school and to thrive. Um, so we got a question from one of our viewers wondering about transfer applications. Uh, mm -hmm. How can you make your transfer application really stand out at a place like CMC? Okay, well, two things. One would be the, the interview. So I, I'd strongly recommend the interview for transfer students at that consistent with first years, but that's just another avenue for you to share more. The other thing about transfers is sharing why it is that you want CMC, particularly if you're transferring from a four-year school. You're leaving a place that you picked and choosing to move to another. And what we want to, what we're really trying to understand is you're running to something and not from something. Sometimes a student is really dissatisfied with the experience, but either they haven't really given it a chance or what they're experiencing is gonna be at a lot of different kinds of schools. And so we, we really, we don't want them to just jump into something without really understanding. Transferring is not a natural process. It's, you know, it, it takes work and adjustment more so than even as the interest first years, it can be a extraordinary journey and our transfer students are some of our, you know, most outstanding leaders, but it's because they came, they wanted CMC. So it is again, that clarity of interview, show, tell us about what your journey has been like in person. You'll get to do that in the essay. And then, um, yeah, you'll get to do it again when you explain why you're applying. And if you go to a big school, don't worry about my teachers don't know me. Um, do your best to get people who do. We, we, you can reach out to us, let us know how we'll work with you in that. We understand the classes, you know, 270, they may not know you and that's okay. Wonderful, thank you so much. There's also a question we've been getting a lot, which is about test optional. We've been getting lots and lots of questions about test <laughs> optional actually, um, but one of them is, uh, how, how are you going to read test optional and how will you not compare students who submit test scores with students who don't submit test scores? And that's kind of, it's such a tricky, no, nuanced question that everybody has it. And I'm wondering if you'd share. Yes. So we're still finalizing exactly how we're going to do this. But I, what, I, what I can explain to and articulate to you is that the reality of anybody who submits a score is they took it very early, sophomore year, fall of junior year. Maybe they got it in this fall, but it's a very small group. So the 
the value of a score, scores are typically taken or tests are definitely taken, you know, at the end of the junior year, summer, right? That That's the optimum time. Nobody really got to take it. And even if they did, it was not under optimum circumstances. So it is a kind of a null and void in the sense of like, what, how are we even use this? The way that, 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 CMC understands it and how we plan on using it is the way that we have used AP scores or subject scores. They're not required. They're not recommended. If you put them in there, we see them, but they're not a part of the discussion. They're not a part of how we're going about doing this. Now, that's how CMC plans on doing it because I don't, I just, I think there's going to be a very small percentage of students who even have them. You may not want to submit them because you took them so early, you know, so I, I really want students to be able to feel like, Look, if you wanted to submit your AP scores because you wanted to look, think about it like that AP or subject tests or IB scores because you wanted us to see how well you did, that's in your purview. You can do that. You can put in your application. You can put in your resume. And I want you to see scores for CMC the same way. If it's something that you look at and you go, I did really well. I rocked this. And I want CMC to know about this. Um, you can put that in your resume. You can put it, you know, there's places you can talk about it. Because we see, we understand you may not have gotten grades spring of your, your senior year. However, that that's really the only reason you should be providing it. And understand that's the only time we're even going to see it. It's not going to be a part of the conversation. It's not going to be a part of how we're assessing and reviewing files. Because most of you won't have it. <laughs> right. Um, that leads me to another question that I'm getting a lot from students, which is students are really seriously considering driving to mm -hmm. another state or flying to another state to sit a test, um, partly maybe because they they really studied hard and they feel like now their practice tests are getting, or practice scores are getting where they want to be, um, and partly because they really feel like if they submit that at 36 or that 35, that's gonna be the thing that gets them in. Um, and I'm wondering if that's true and also what advice you would have for those students who are considering going somewhere else, traveling to sit a test. Friends, our time is precious. It's incredibly precious. And, and as, as I talked about earlier, you know, you going through virtual learning or whatever your learning environment is, there's challenges with that. You trying to, to learn about colleges, apply to college, be with your family and friends as much as you possibly can virtually or, you know, in person. So that's what the focus should be, not on something that is not even going to be a part of most colleges' decision-making processes. Just by the sheer fact, I mean, every school is going to have a different response and you want to understand that, but there's just not going to be enough students who took the test. That 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 is the reality that we are in right now. So I'm sorry if you feel like you were investing a lot of time in it and that this might seem worth it. But it to me that getting on a flight, risking your health, risking your sanity, wasting that time uh, and that time of your parent or guardian that has to go with you on this is so much better spent Again, even if it is watching Netflix, um, even if it's going for you know a walk, if it is, you know what, I just need a day to to read for love, the love of reading. Um, I would way rather, and I think any of us would way rather you spend it that way, refresh, recharge, get a good night's sleep. I can't imagine you know flying, being in a hotel, taking a test. I know it, it happens, and people do it, like when they're taking the MCAT and things like that, but not ideal, not good for you. Um, and again, like I said, we depressed that. It's now something that is just going to be there. It's not going to be a part of like your curriculum, your transcript, things that we're looking at, recommendation letters that are consistent across applicants. It's very relegated to, you know, just a part of if you want to share and you took it, that's fine. But we fully expect most of you are not going to have it. <laughs> it's really important to hear you say that, Jen. I mean, I think that that question is really, you know, well, well, um, well put, and I, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to answer it as, as a college admissions officer. Yeah. I think more families and students need to hear that. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Thank you so much. And we have one other question, if you don't mind, um, from our transfer potential applicant. Um, do you think that CMC is going to be accepting spring transfer this year? Yes, we are planning on. I don't know yet how many. We'll know more about that in November, but yes, we are planning on taking Wonderful. Um, so it is not too late, viewers, to pop in a question in the question box, but I am going to begin to wrap it up. Um, I do want to let everybody know about a couple of free events that are coming up. Um, we've been doing this live session, um, so we, I want to tell you about that. But the first thing that's coming up is actually a workshop that we're going to offer on the 17th um, on scholarships and financial aid 
which is definitely a very timely thing because a lot of people are really thinking about being financially stretched because things are so different. Um, and this is going to be led by Jeff Tang, who is one of our very own consultants who happens to be a former financial aid officer for USC, of all places. Um, Secondly, our next Live with College broadcast is going to be coming up on October 1st with Harvey Mudd's Director of Admissions, Peter Osgood. Um, he's going to be discussing how to prepare for STEM admissions and for Harvey Mudd College. Um, the details for both can be found on the link that I'm going to pop into the comments box right now. Um, apparently, I cannot paste and talk, though, so there's a little pause there. Um, and. Uh, you know, you'll also find there the archives of our previous talks. Um, last week we talked to Pomona College, a few weeks back we talked to UCLA, to Boulder, to University of Oregon, um, and there's going to be more coming up. So please feel free to share with your friends and community. We just want to get the information out there. It's time for transparency and it's time for the opacity to be over. We want to be an agent of change with that. Um, and, you know, as a as a group that is really trying to reach as many families, as many students as we can to provide the best information we can, the best access to college, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, Jennifer, for sharing your care for these students, for joining us tonight, for telling us about this important work that you do, and it sounds just incredible, and for letting us kind of get a peek behind the curtain and see through your eyes, um, see how you see students for the evening. Uh, it's so appreciated. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, and I also want to let anybody know that, you know, if you're watching and you feel like you need more information about freshman admissions, about transfer admissions, about graduate admission, um, and if you just want to talk, the first step with us, no matter what, is a is just a phone call. It's a free phone call. We want to talk to you. We would be happy to talk about your specific circumstances and give you information about what to think about. Because honestly, even just that can be hugely helpful. I'm sure you learned so many things tonight that you wouldn't have thought of if you didn't come. So, you know, you can't really know what you don't already know. Um, and just that can be enough. If you want more help, you want to work one-on-one -on -one with us, great. If not, great. We just want to help. We're here to support. So I'm going to pop in the link to sign up for, you know, a schedule of free consultation. Um, and we would love to hear from you. So I want to hand it over to Jenny for any closing thoughts now that you might have. Well, this has just been really wonderful to have you, Jen, and I, I really appreciate you talking a little bit about the college interview. Hopefully everyone who's tuned in and who's joined us feels a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more confident about this um, important, uh, you know, aspect of the holistic review, at least for CMC. And um, please keep learning, keep um, enjoying this process. Uh, you know, going to college is, is such a big step. Um, and so we just want to thank you, Jen, and, um, and my hat's off to you for all the good work you're doing. Thank you. Good luck, everybody. Deep Thanks. breath. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Okay. <laughs>